Hey, what's up, everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so uh, I was doing a little thinking. Obviously, you guys have been hearing me talk about all these different things, philosophizing on who needs to do what, what will make other people's lives better, and all kinds of other stuff. But I think at the end of the day, um, for me, I just want to harken back to how I felt as a fan when Kobe Bryant uh, requested his trade out from the Los Angeles Lakers. To be honest with everybody, it was weird because we had already lost Shaq and we were in a weird space where we knew we weren't very good. Now forgive me if my memory isn't great because this has been a very long time, right? Very long time, but as I remember correctly, he was choosing between the Clippers and the Bulls. <clears throat> and we knew that the Bulls had been screaming his name every time we would go to the arena. It was, we want Kobe. For the past two years, it had been, we want Kobe. And so we knew that he had ties there, of course, to Mike and everything. And that, you know, it was always his dream to kind of follow in Mike's footsteps, even though that's not something he ever admitted to us. You could see it in his play that Mike was the guy. That was the one he, he patterned everything after. And so... Seeing him in a Bulls jersey kind of felt like it was poetic justice in a way. If the Lakers weren't going to build proper stuff around him and I had to see him in a different uniform, I already thought that, you know, he was like Mike, so it would have been kind of awesome to see him try to go there and continue the legacy in that way. But, you know, from a Laker fan perspective, it was devastating because you didn't want him to leave, obviously, selfishly. You're like, nah, I don't want him to leave my team. But for me, the way I was thinking back then was, we're in the dumps. It's rebuild time. We need to start over. Shaq is gone. Uh, we've had some bad seasons now. Didn't seem like things were getting any better. We couldn't seem to get the first pick in the draft, that kind of thing. And so it was like, you know what? Why are we wasting Kobe's years? Why are we wasting his prime? He's done enough for us. Uh, that was my mentality. And, you know, there's, it's not going to be us hating him for leaving on this one. You know, I didn't. I think that's how we kind of felt. I think most people were actually kind of poised because the way the media was giving it to us, it was kind of like, you know, yeah, he could go to one of these two teams, but it's more than likely that, you know, the Lakers will probably figure out a way to keep him. So it was kind of like, ah, you still have hope. So in listening to it, the more it was going on, it was like, okay, he's going to be, it's Chicago. It's looking like Chicago. It's looking like Chicago. And in my mind, I'm just like, all right. <laughs> I'm going to get me a Kobe Chicago jersey. That was literally my mentality at the time, if I remember correctly. It wasn't like, oh, my God, he's going to leave us. It's because I knew we couldn't do nothing for him. I knew that our team wasn't in a position or weren't making the decisions to do anything that would put him in a position to win a championship, and he needed to be winning. And so I felt like maybe Chicago gave him a better chance. Um... I think at the time the Clippers had Elton Brand and they had a few pieces that were really good at the moment. At that moment, I think Elton had just won the MVP or something like that. So you saw the pieces there, but you didn't hate the Clippers at the time either. It wasn't like you hated them. That was before all of that. So it was like, I kind of liked the Clippers, you know what I mean? So I didn't look at it the same way. I would hate to see him in a Clipper uniform, but it was like, all right, well, he's just slip, slipping over there. He doesn't even leave LA. So it's like, all right, we'll just kind of watch. I'm not going to be a fan, but. You know, it's not like the vitriol that we have currently for that team. It's, we didn't have that energy for them at the time. It was more so like, oh, they're our little brothers. So, you know, if the Clippers are, are playing and it's a decent matchup, I'll probably watch. You know, that was that was that era. And then, you know, it was a lot going on with him. You know, I think if I'm not mistaken, it was injuries as well he was dealing with or something like that. So it was a lot to consider at the time, and it just didn't feel like – like a bad breakup it felt like a sad like devastating breakup but it felt like it had already begun the breakup you know it was one of those situations where once Shaq is gone you know we were we just figured we were going to be in the toilet from here on out we didn't think the Lakers were really going to build new thing to begin with so once they were able to make the trade um, for Powell I believe it was that's how that went and everything worked out we were able to kind of settle in and just not not even consider moving on I think that's how that went, but as my memory serves me, it wasn't like, uh, you know, it, it wasn't like it was like, oh my God, he's leaving us, we're getting ready to burn his jersey, all that. Nah, that wasn't the sentiment around Laker fans that I was around anyway. Nobody was feeling that way. We were just like, 
And Lakers ain't about to do nothing. They ain't going to do nothing. You know, that's what the attitude was. Like, you might as well just let him go somewhere and not waste his career. And so anyway, as I speak in circles, I come around to where I'm at now, and I look at fan bases and things like that. And it's like, you know, from the perspective I was in, it's like we had celebrated three championships at that point. So we were satisfied to a degree. It wasn't like we were still left waiting for our God to deliver. It was more so like not wanting him to waste his career after delivering, you know, with a team that wasn't going to be able to keep him in contention. So I look at Portland, I look at some of these other teams that have these players, Washington, and maybe they, they're attached to their players. They don't want to let them go. They have unfinished business. So I don't think I can relate to that the same way. But I do feel like if your team can't do nothing for those players, you know, letting them go down with the ship, so to speak, I, I don't know. As a fan, that didn't always sit right with me. For a guy who had been with us for so long, who had get dedicated so much, who we had respected to such a degree, now winning matters. You know, winning matters. And I don't know how I would look at it if Kobe hadn't delivered and then decided he wanted to bolt. I don't know. You know, but when you consider what <clears throat> what Dame means to Portland, what Bill means to Washington, it just seems to me that if I were in their fan bases and I knew we weren't doing anything anyway, I would probably want them to find greener pastures elsewhere. And I would just follow them, you know, and, except for when they play my team. That's how I would look at it. And so, I don't know, man. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm, I'm listening to a lot of people that are happy that Dame stayed at 61 mil. I, too, was happy Kobe stayed at whatever outstanding amount that was after we were no longer any good. Um, but I still felt it was always okay if he wanted to leave. I still felt like because we weren't doing anything, he was honorable for going down with the ship. But I also didn't long for him to win. He had five at that point. You know what I mean? It's like if he wants to go down with the ship, he's earned the right. It's not like he has to chase anything. What's, what's he going to look for? Another championship? He got them all. So it's like the reason why I spoke the way I did in regards to Dame was because he hasn't won, and I believe he wants to win. Right? People are going to say he doesn't want to win because he stayed in Portland and Portland can't win. I think some of the pieces that they've put together can put them in a sneaky position to be a playoff team. I think when you consider the acquisition of GP2, that's an acquisition I haven't considered as much when thinking about the totality of the Portland Trailblazers over these last two, three conversations. I think his piece makes a difference. Defensively, that could really help them even with the injury, the shade and sharp and all of that. I think in working him into the equation with Jeremy Grant, that's not bad. That ain't bad at all. They can probably make the playoffs if, if everybody stays healthy and a few other teams underachieve, which is, you know, it's possible. Teams beat each other up, you never know. Play in tournament aspirations, I'd say. That ain't good enough for me. I don't think it should be good enough for Dame Lillard. I understand generational wealth, and he was talking about how he's getting a bag for his family, had his son on his lap when he was signing. All of that is, is great, man, and I send him great congratulations. But I think that bag comes anyway, to be honest with you. I don't think he has to choose between that and winning. It's a shame he has to choose between loyalty and winning, though. Um, he says all he really wants is a chance, and he feels he can get that in Portland with this unit. Go for it go for it. I know the field doesn't look good in regards to what he has to face on paper, but if you believe, you believe. Um, and maximizing your opportunity to get the biggest amount of money, I don't disagree with. Fundamentally, I don't I don't believe that that's a bad decision when you're thinking about trying to accumulate generational wealth. Um, you know, when you have an opportunity to be in the NBA, you stay with one team, and you make a business decision, as everyone's saying, business decision, quotation mark, to stay with that team and just maximize your opportunities. When they have the ability to offer $61 million, and you see they're not delegating that money in any other ways to make the team extremely better, then obviously why not take that money if they're offering it to you? I don't disagree with that. I think that's when I look at the organization and say, are you sure that's the amount you want to pay this particular person if, I'm, if I have any qualms about it, so to speak? which I really don't. That was never the problem. I just feel like 
it, it just becomes about what you want to do, you know, as an athlete and, and how you're willing to be looked at in situations. You know, it's, if you take 61, that's not going somewhere else to another player who can also provide generational wealth for their family. So it's like, it's a, it's a lot of different ways to look at it, but when it really comes down to it, it's, it's, it's a duality of if you want to lean toward, you know, supporting Dame, you could say it's loyalty. If you want to lean toward not supporting Dame, you could say he's being selfish and, not, and doesn't want to win. It's like, however you want to look at it, it doesn't matter. You know, it really doesn't. Because he's at peace with what he's done. But the problem that I think he, that I see is, well, he is something he said in regards to, I know myself, like, and if I don't win it a certain way, it's not gonna feel the same to me. I was listening to Perk and I gotta lean on Perk on this one and say, I can't speak to what it feels like to win a championship. I know Dame can't either. And that's the point. It's like, I don't know if you really know what you'd feel once that moment happens, even if you were to get a cheap championship. Maybe maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe in knowing yourself, you know it doesn't change anything. But what if that experience does, in fact, change self? What if it does? What, like, I don't know if, if an experience can really be defined uh, before actually experiencing it. You know, you can't really say what you're going to be or how you're going to be until you're in that world. Like, I always talk about how, or I think about it. I don't really think I've spoken about it, but how I, you know, been around a lot of different people from a lot of different places, so I've gathered culture and stuff like that. But I've never been in these places where they're from, so there's a, there's a perspective that's lacking when I don't have, like, for example, I've never been to China, so I've never had China surrounding me. I've never been anywhere where... As far as I can see is China, and far as I can see is China. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like it's lacking perspective. For me, I've been around people who've helped me understand how things may have gone in certain aspects of their experiences in those places. But the point is, until I'm there, I may not know what it feels like to have my body in those places. I may not know what it feels like to be enriched in, the, in that culture only. You know what I mean? So until I know, I can't really say who I'll be in those situations because maybe I'll meet some people that change my way of thinking and then from there the who I am isn't the same me I was and I think that's what getting older is teaching me like I never thought I was an artist I don't I don't do art right but I just picked it up over the last 10 months and now it's part of my regular everyday routine so I now identify as an artist as to which when I was dame age I would have told you I can't draw I don't do art you see what I'm saying like the age he's at right now I'd have told you I don't, I don't do art but like several years later, it's, it's something I do every single day for hours at a time. So you understand, like, you change. You change and experiences change, you, you know? Things put me in a position where I want to do this now. It's like those experiences I didn't identify with. So all I'm saying is not that he should chase something different or, or, or just, like, have second doubts about him knowing himself. But what I'm saying, situations can change you. Not always for the worse. Um, not always for the better. But I think situations and moments such as championships, I've watched so many athletes' spirits change after the championship, some for better, some for worse. And when I say spirit, I mean their demeanor and how they act and how they operate, it seems, on the court and, and, and how they appear to to just find peace and happiness, some of them, you know? And it's like, it's because that hard work that they put in came to fruition, that ultimate uh, goal was reached. And I just feel like, Dame is churning up a mountaintop to reach a championship, but he's staying in place and it's not allowing him to actually obtain it. So while he's telling himself he's cool in that space, you continue to have to push your body into situations where you know you're just not good enough to compete with the field you're in when you know you're a competitor and your skill set is to kill. It's not like he's a helper. He's not a facilitator. He's not a, a a rebounder per se, or somebody who's doing dirty work. No, this is this is the guy that takes the last shot that sends you home crying. I can't see him making this sacrifice in such a way without actually knowing that the experience of that type of triumph is worth living through. Like he has to know that. You know what I mean? In my mind, I believe he has to know that. 
Like you haven't actually fulfilled your true purpose until you get to get the last shot for the championship. If you're the guy that knocks people out. You know what I mean? You got to get there. And so the teammates at the Portland Trailblazers have to put on his team, have to get him to those moments. That's all I'm saying. If you can get him to those moments, I believe he'll he'll be at peace. You know what I mean? They have to be good enough to give him a chance. I really believe that. But are they? Are they, Dave? You know what I mean? I don't know he would be happy if Steph Curry was his guy on the left and LeBron James on his right. I don't know that would allow him to be himself on the basketball court. I think he's more Iverson than he is Bron in that way. You know what I'm saying? I think he's more one-man band, more one, you know? But you still got to have the team. You still got to surround him with the defenders if you're going to build that way. So I think they're on the path to maybe doing that. They ain't there yet. They ain't, they're not, you know what I mean? And so this is when it gets tricky because it's like if you're talking to Dame, it's like how much do you want to invest in the team you're on? You know what I mean? It's like if you're going to stay there and you're going to tell everybody you're loyal, at what point do you do you invest in the squad yourself? You know what I mean? Taking 61 is not investing in the squad. I'm just not going to be able to look at it a different way. I understand the financial benefits of making sure generational wealth is in your situation. Uh, but everybody has that same ability to an extent. Maybe not to 61, but everybody, you know what I mean, could take their maximum amount. I think when you, when you, when you leave a little something there... You reinforce the not only the notion that you're there to be loyal, but also that you're there to help people win with you, not just that you'll be there to um, see if you can get there. You know what I mean? It's like, do they deserve to see if you can get there, or do they deserve the, we're going to get this championship? And I, I just wonder if, if the sacrifice Dame is making is, is going to leave him the legacy that he's hoping to receive overall. You know what I mean? Because there's so many different ways to look at this situation, but in taking the maximum amount, you effectively assure that you make it a little more difficult for the GM to build, even though I'm the first guy to tell you I don't think they're going to do a whole lot if you leave that money on the table. But that's notwithstanding that, you know, that my belief could be wrong, that they could 100% do a lot if they were to take 50 or 45. You understand what I'm saying? As opposed to 61. Just for these two years to be a win-now team, you know what I mean, since this is just a small sample size of time. So I can't shake that. I don't think that, I don't think Dame is is absent of that understanding. I just think he's sacrificing it for his for his own name, for his own selfish gain, honestly, for his family, for for what for his generational wealth opportunity. And I think that 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 does that does tarnish the situation a little bit. It does look as if he's more so trying to be a tycoon than he is trying to be a winner, and that does hurt the, the overall message, which is I'm loyal and I'm here. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, you're loyal, but you're also bleeding us dry. You know what I'm saying? You're like you're siphoning from us our opportunity to truly win. So even if that's not the reality of the situation, it's presented that way. It is presented that way. Like because we're not good enough to win, I'm just gonna take the bag. And 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 that is something I might do myself. Especially if I have children. I, like you can think what you want of me, truly. I did what I did for my kids. I get it. And I will live with what comes with that, which is going to be people looking at me like this. So that's, you know, that it's just understanding that, being happy with it, being absolutely happy with it for what, you, for what you're sacrificing. So I hope he is, man. I hope he is. But I also hope he understands that there will be moments in time where he's going to wish he lived through those moments where he could have won a championship. And maybe the only way to do that is to leave a couple dollars on the table right now. Maybe the only way to do that is to team up with somebody that you don't really vibe with. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes we think we know ourselves very well until we go through a few things that change us. And then we're like, well, damn, I did cheat myself out of a lot because I was hanging on to some stuff that I just evolved through. I just changed. You know, I just value different things now. You know. And there's something to be said for, you know, just just having a balance, I think. Balance. It's what I'm seeking in my life. It's like, yes, I, I want to I want to make sure. I have everything for them. And it's never too much. Not in this climate. Don't get it twisted. It's never too much money to have to secure for your children. But certain things you can do in life, maybe leave a little bit here, it might actually parlay you into a position to get a lot more there. Maybe you can't see it, 
because he's trying to like get everything right now, but like here's a scenario. Maybe it's bullcrap. Throw it away if it's nothing. I take 45 instead of 61 for this particular year. We bring in so and so. We get a chance at a championship. Now we're a different type of attractive. I sign on for a different amount. Now we got off the field endorsements, off the court endorsements, rather they maybe weren't there because we're a championship caliber team. Now we got a new guy who's come in who can also make it so that we have more leverage to trade these guys. And guess what? They got more money to pay me on my next contract because of that. Now we're moving around. It's like this. There are other ways to make sure you get what you want instead of just taking everything right away and snatching it in your pocket and then just saying, I think there's, there's another way to get it. And if you don't go that way, you take an even smarter route and leave a little bit here, take a little less here, but, but invest here. Oh boy, the investment and the, and the money that it can make you and the, and the favors you have because people know you've not only stayed, but you genuinely tried to help them succeed in what it is that they were ultimately trying to do. See what I'm saying? Now maybe they're looking at you as a partner 10, 20 years down the road as opposed to a guy who just played good ball for us and took everything he could. I don't know. Like I said, this could be bull crap. But I just want to present different ways that may be possible because I've seen enough scenarios where stuff like that has happened, where people have taken different routes and then boom, look at that. It stack them crazy because they just took a different route or because they didn't take everything now. It's like the... The whole conversation of would you rather sit down with Jay-Z or or take $500,000? It's like, well, if Jay-Z can show me where I can get $500,000 a month, you know, if he can connect me with the people who can get me $100,000 a week, you see what I'm saying? What the, well, obviously, I want to sit down and have that conversation. But if I don't take the risk to sit down and have that conversation, I could take my $500,000, see where it gets me. Maybe it does great. I could probably do some great things, maybe turn it into a million. I don't know, maybe more. But that connection. Now that I've sat down with Jay-Z, whatever he's going to tell me, maybe I can parlay that connection to say, yo, I put that on my resume. I've sat with people such as Jay-Z. That might give me a, a situation that takes me further than that $500,000 ever could. And maybe it doesn't. Maybe I sit down with Jay-Z, he gives me the finger and laughs at me. Just gets up and walks away. I don't know. It's a risky the way, but the point is, there are other ways. There are. Than just sacrificing everything, sitting in a hole, taking all you can, and then going like that. It's, it's, it's more. There are more. There, there are smarter ways. I'm telling you. But I'm not exactly the person to listen to because I'm not living through those experiences. I don't have that reality in my life. So it's like, oh, you don't. Why listen to you? Why listen to you? I don't know why this is in my head all i can say is it's going into this camera and i believe there's another way i really do but nevertheless i can't help but appreciate seeing people be able to do things for their families and to see an opportunity like that come away come a person's way and not only that but it's not like they're being gifted that but because they have a certain level of excellence that they've provided with their talent and their work ethic it gets them to a position to where they can make a decision of whether to take a lot or leave it. It's because of that excellence that those athletes are in that position and that's why I root for them. You know what I mean? I, I, I really celebrate that opportunity because maybe I couldn't do it, but my grandson may be able to, my nephew may be able to. The, the fact that something like that's possible to where because he's good at ball, he can make $600 million in his career, half a billion dollars, just because he could shoot. Like, that's, that's big, man. And I don't expect people to be strategizing and be just because they're basketball players that have all these different concepts in my and that I have in my mind of how they should go. No, nah, nah, hell no. That's why I'm here. Hopefully I can provide a different way. You know, hopefully I can just give you a taste of what it is I see in my head that's possible that you could take it somewhere and do real with it. Maybe that's all it's for. But I watch athletes take so many different paths and I watch them grow older and I see some of them are happy, some of them ain't happy. Talk, you hear the stories. You know, I think certain mistakes don't have to be made. I think we can really learn from a lot of people's mistakes. You know what I mean? I think it's a lot of ways you can see where people have done certain things. It's like, okay, well, how happy were they? How, how did that turn out in the long term? You know what I mean? So if I see something, I point it out maybe, you know, if, if it's worth pointing out. And so in this case, 
I don't doubt Dame has a plan and it's worked. You understand what I'm saying? So I want to make that very clear. It's just, I think he can get more out of his career. And at the age that he's at, I just don't know that Portland can get him those moments. That's ultimately all I'm saying. So once again, congratulations to him. If my energy hadn't come off as congratulatory, seriously, though, that is not minor at all. And I would love to be able to do that for my family or put myself in a position to do that. And so that's not something that somebody um, should poo-poo or shove aside, especially if you don't have those opportunities in your life. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta strive to put yourself in a position to, have, to display that type of excellence or to create those type of um, avenues so that new forms of excellence can be displayed and new forms of generational wealth <clears throat> can be manifested. I think that that's the point. That's another reason why I love the NBA because it's a blueprint for other manifestations to to appear you could you could take that and do it in different ways with something else so you know i, I think i think sports help a lot for the future and, and how how people are going to go for it generational wealth and i think all in all man athletics you know they provide a lot man so it's layered so many different games in, in within the games the gm games the basketball game and in this the different ways people view the sports it's, it's special when you find an athlete who's as gifted as Dame, or as gifted as Kyrie, gifted as KD, gifted as Bron. And so for me, it's just like seeing them struggle at the end of their careers uh, with various situations, trying to get where they want to go, trying to level out the balance between getting that wealth and experiencing the best moments. I, I just would like to see us kind of help somehow push it along to where that they don't have to have those type of imbalances in the future for, for, for new generations of athletes. So that's what I speak for. That's, that's what I'm, I'm vocal about. That's why I talk the way I do. So I'll leave it at that, man. Almost 30 minutes of my voice. You know how I am. I let them go. And, um, you know, really appreciate everybody who follows me. And, um, you know, whether you're in those, opportunity, in those situations where you have those opportunities or not, uh, you are valued here. And my hope is to send good energy your way. So that's what I got, man. My name is BDF44. Thank you all for watching with me.